Welcome. My name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. If you want to subscribe to this channel, click the button down on the bottom right and hit the bell for all notifications. And if you find this work interesting or of value, why not consider helping us out? There's some links in the description below. So, this is Lion Tractor Beam, Bending the Rules. So as uh, someone pointed out on the forum called Stephen, uh, he noticed that the silver that was placed under the wound copper here, uh, and this is two layers of magnet wire, as we described in Mining Diamonds with Lion, this silver is basically not here. And it had migrated to here. Here's a blown up version of that. And this is the area where it transitions from, essentially the, the bolt is going all the way down here, so it transitions from what you would call the, the actual core core inside, and this kind of gloopy melted area, to the sort of largely unaffected area of copper. So it just kind of reaches down here. There doesn't appear to be any silver over here, and there doesn't appear to be any silver over here. So how? when it melts at 961 degrees C and boils at 2160 degrees C, did it migrate completely from here all the way down to here. What it kind of indicates is that when the drain was attached to the right-hand side, this bolt over here, there was some sort of directionality in whatever was causing this to migrate from the core area down along the copper. So I'm just going to leave that hanging there as a question, but to say that there was definitely a directionality caused, or appears to be a directionality caused by this event over here, which moved the silver and left some deposits over here. Now, one thing when I first got the reactor, I wanted to do some, you know, close-up videos and, I, uh, and photos, and I've shared those some long while back. But what absolutely fascinated me was this kind of grey look that it had. I mean, it's completely grey. And uh, it's sh shiny, but what was interesting, if I click here, you see, if I add the flash, it some parts of it return this very red colour. And uh, this got me thinking. Um, this material appears to respond to the directionality of light. And when you, when you look at it um, with any kind of diffuse light, it just looks silver. It doesn't matter which way you turn it, it just kind of looks silver. Uh, but when you shine intense light on it, it comes back with this uh, red look, but only in certain areas. And if you look at these areas here, they don't appear to uh, <laughs> do anything but very slight returning of the light. So it seems to be very directional in terms of how it responds to light. And this was very, very interesting. I, and and I, I spoke to the lion author. I said, what's going on here? It's, it, it's like really interesting how it's, it's showing light. And you just don't see this when you look at it in your hand. And he said, well, uh, it's a bit more interesting than that. And he sent me uh, some other images. But before we get on to those, uh, you can see here, the, this is a bright light shining from the camera flash. And you can see only certain areas uh, report back as being like red and ruby-like. But actually they're cuprous oxide, uh, as we said in Mining Diamonds with Lion. And what was used uh, by the Lion author was one of these um, USB microscopes. And what they've got in them around the camera is like a light ring like this. This is just a bigger one with more LEDs. And this means that you can have intense light coming from around the lens and hitting the target. So essentially it was following the same rules. But here you see the actual mineral. And even under diffuse light and at any angle, it still reports the same color. It's not doing this. So something is different about the cuprous oxide uh, in the Lion Reactor exterior to actual mineral cuprous oxide. Something is different. Well, of course, we know it's not crystalline. It's amorphous, so perhaps it's like that. But I'm not sure that fully explains it. And then we came to do some analysis. And 
you already know that uh, the person doing the analysis at Masaryk University was a bit shocked that she couldn't identify the elements in other areas of the reactor. And what I'm doing here is I'm moving a little bit on. So I'm actually looking at what ostensibly is part of the main core, but on the outside. We've not looked into the inside yet. And I'm just looking at the, the part between... Uh, the two cracked off segments, but closest to the alumina, which has been coated with this silvery substance. Over Just over to the right was uh, where we saw that beautiful picture of the strange radiation track. Now, what we actually see there is copper and oxygen, which you would expect. It's an oxide of copper, uh, or it should be. Um, but there were large areas that didn't detect as copper and oxygen, uh, they detected of things that were o only closest matched by ytterbium and hafnium. And if I just go through this, you can actually see that uh, they're very distinct areas. So the copper here, the oxygen here, so the copper and oxygen are reasonably co-located. Okay? But then it comes to the ytterbium. Okay, that's that's in a different place to the copper and the oxygen. And we'll look at the hafnium. And that's very, very distinct. If we go back to the main image, you'll see that here you can see where there was some sort of part of the copper wire. And this is a gap where two pieces of copper wire were turned to jelly or whatever had happened and, and then made into this glassy substance. And this is where it wasn't essentially touching the alumina tubes. There was no real contact there. Um, and so it didn't really stay liquid enough to melt and, and go across the, the bridge across the gap. But you'll see that depending on the angle, it reports a different uh, element. And we already know that the silver has migrated from here to here. So there's been something that's made things directional down this side of the reactor. And what we're seeing over here uh, is essentially you have your ytterbium on the face facing this way down, you have your uh, hafnium that way up, and you have your uh, copper and oxygen sort of where it's kind of pointing out towards the, the camera, um, which is kind of what you would see uh, in uh, something that's doing phase conjugation. And what I mean by that is it means it's sending the light directly back to its source. So what I have here is I have uh, two pieces of material. The one on the left is a, um, a piece of shiny plastic and the other one on the right is retro reflective material. So this is uh, essentially a similar to uh, scotch uh, uh, you know, reflective uh, material, 3M reflective material. And they respond to light very, very differently. Essentially, this will always send the light back to the place it came from, and this will diffuse light to some degree. And so it, it, it seems like this is doing something similar. When the plane of the uh, break is exactly facing, I, I mean, it needs a lot more analysis. Um, but when, when the plane of the break is almost kind of mostly this way, um, it's kind of reporting what it should do. But if it's at some sort of angle, like if it's at that way, it reports uh, the some oxygen where the copper is there. But if it's at this angle, it's reporting uh, ytterbium. And in a very specific angle there, it's, it's reporting hafnium. I, I don't know. I think a lot more study needs to go into this. This is just my uh, thoughts uh, at the moment. But then there's one last thing I want to point out is there appears to be this area which doesn't seem to report as much. It doesn't really matter what you look at. It's, it's dark. And then if I go along here, it's dark. And, and then there is a little bit coming into here and a little bit here. But this is, this is oxygen. You would kind of expect that because, you know, this is meant to be aluminium oxide. This is the reactor shell. Um, but wh why is there no aluminium being reported? I mean... In fact, there's no aluminium being reported anywhere. Um, it's just like a dark area. What What is going on? Um, and so <laughs> what I can think is, it, I, I, I don't know, this might sound a little bit crazy, but um, it's almost as if 
the electrons are coming from the beam of the uh, microscope, uh, the electron beam of the microscope, and they aren't getting to here. They're being drawn over to here. And whatever material they go into, depending on the angle that they go into the material, maybe the x-rays that are being emitted are, are of some uh, frequency, but th th they're sort of being slowed down and coming back at a different frequency, such that they report as closest to hafnium in a terbium, but actually they're probably not either. There's something that is doing something very, very weird. Moreover, whatever these structures are that are in this supposed oxide of copper is aligned in this direction, in the same direction that the silver migrated. This is absolutely incredible to me and also bizarre, totally bizarre. This is a metamaterial. And so I'll leave some questions there. I'm just really interested for what people have to say about this. I, I want to know why does it respond so different to diffuse and direct lighting? Why does it just under light? So it's almost like it's it's bending or capturing the light in the same way that this does. This material uh, has little microspheres in there, so whatever, and they're just prone of the polymer that's bonding them. And so whatever way the light comes in, it always goes back to uh, the the point that it comes from, uh, from about fifteen degrees. Uh, all the way around to 165 degrees. So it's like they can't handle 15 degrees off the, 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 the flat plane, so it's coming in too, too sharp over here. Um, but anywhere here, if I shine a light from this angle, the light will go back to it. If I shine it from here, it'll come back to it. And that's what you're seeing as the copper oxide type thing. So what is going under on the direct lighting? Is it actually bending or capturing light and what is why is it reported x-rays um th that seem to be ve vector specific uh i mean it, like i say some of them report as x-rays that are close to elements that are known but as i showed you in a previous video not all of the uh characteristic uh, uh x-rays are there from those particular elements. So it's like an X-ray is being emitted and then it's being slowed down or, or bent or something. And then why are there dark areas? Why are, is this area not visible? I mean, it's dark. I mean, it's there. I can see it physically in real life, but it, it, it's dark in all of these different uh, tests. And, and why are we not seeing aluminium? I mean, it, it can't be just pure oxygen, obviously. I mean, can it? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, is there something about this metamaterial, this this outside crust of lion, that's literally sucking the light uh, or the the uh, X-ray beam into it? I don't know, but it's utterly fascinating. This reactor lion is going to unlock so much more. Now, I've asked people to look at these images. I'll share this GIF image. And look at the other images I've, I've shared recently with the other structures on it. There's more in those images. There's more in this image. Just knock yourselves out. This is just a piece of joy to analyze. And I can't wait to tell you. I can't wait to tell you everything that's in my head. Really, I can't wait. Um, but it, it needs a lot of work to, to, uh, to arrange it. But just go and think about this for a while. What is going on with this device?